In this project, I used Apache Edgebase to analyze a large data set uh, on e-commerce data. The uh, project requirements were to use multiple containers. So that's what we did. Let's take a look at these containers. These are, these are all the containers that were used for the project itself. These are all connected. We can look at that through the networks. This is the network that it was connected on. It's a bridge network. And uh, we can also take a closer look by going into the inspect. Right, these are all the containers and this is the basic configuration. So let's first enter the uh, edge base. Let's first enter the edge base master node to get, so that we'll be able to enter the shell itself. Right. Um, there we go. Meanwhile, let's take a look at the data set that we use. This data set is taken off Kaggle. It's about um, a little bit less than six GB in size, and it contains information on e-commerce behavior data from a multi-category store, which means that it includes purchases, viewing of uh, different products and stuff like that. So there are different event times, which uh, I used as the row key for my table. This is the event type, product ID, category ID, category code, brand, price, user ID, user sessions. Uh, because HBase in, in includes the use of column families, I divided these into, this is the row key. This was uh, under the uh, column family event. Product ID was saved under column family product. Category ID and category code were saved under product, uh, so, sorry, column family category. Brand and price were included in one column family and user ID and user session were included in one uh, column family, right? So we can also take a look at that over here by going into the list of tables. This e-commerce data is the original data set and e-commerce two is a snapshot that we took of the original data set. But because this was taken after a bunch of commands had already been executed on it, it's a little bit different from the actual data set that you would find on Kaggle. Let's take a look at the data set over here. Oh, sorry, I'm not sure what happened here. Let's go over here, right? So it was downloaded off Git and we use a Docker Compose file to set it up. We can use all of these. These are all the containers that I listed. Um, we use the exists to see whether uh, the table actually exists, if it's enabled or not. Then we tried uh, disabling and re-enabling it again to see whether that would work. Describing the table gives a list of information on the different column families that are included and what uh, information they consist of, etc. You can count the values within the uh, table itself and you can alter the table by adding new columns, column families, uh, updating different um, security or uh, replication scopes, things like that. This is a new column family that was added in just to test it out. You can also see it here if the command works. Let's take a look at that. Let's, there we go. Um, describe equal. Right, there we go. The column families are described here. Uh, this is column new, which was included as, as a test run. Right, so then we can check to see if the column, if sorry, the table was imported correctly. The, the data was imported correctly into the table that we created to hold that data. We can use basic functions like get, including um, based on just the row key or information for a specific column, uh, different columns, multiple columns. Um, you can set for timestamps um, or we can use a counter for, to check for the uh, number of cells that have passed until we get to the cell that we want right here. You can get the number of splits. This is by region, but I think there's only one region involved here. Uh, we can use this to see whether, uh, sorry, we can use the put value, put command to put 200 into the price column for this specific row. And we can verify that by using the get command later. 
We can perform a meta scan on the table or locate the region of a given row. Um, can delete specific cell values, or we can delete the entire cell if we want to and verify that using the get command. We can also use the get values for uh, the specific uh, columns for a specific row, or we can scan the table for all of these, starting from a specific row and setting limits to how many rows that we want to scan. Uh, then I use row filter, uh, value filter, um, value filter again. Uh, first key only filter, which only shows you the row key, the prefix filter and byte utility. We had to import all of these using the Java command. Um, you can see here. Or then we used uh, the column prefix filter, um, count, column count get filter, uh, page filter, uh, inclusive stop filter, which includes, which uh, searches for a specific, um, scans the table for a specific data, but uh, includes the row that you have to stop at. Um, we use the qualifier filter, value filter, family filter, and the and operator to include both of these. And we used uh, the or operator to include um, these different uh, specifications went over different filters using a uh, row key setting limits and uh, put different values in. We can verify those using get commands. We can disable and drop the table, uh, but I tried that on a different ta uh, table that did not hold any specific information so that we didn't lose any data that we had imported. Then this is the snapshot that I took, which uh, I showed earlier in the command prompt and used that snapshot to clone the table that already existed. I also attempted peers and replication, but there were a few errors that didn't allow me to carry those out properly. Thank you so much.